Could this be the most draw bias driver of 2021? Today we're testing this out along with the rest of the Honma GS game improvement range to find out. Okay, I've got the irons and the driver from this range to test out today. First up in the irons, I've got a 10 iron. That's Honma's equivalent of a pitching wedge. And to be honest, I quite like the idea of it being a 10 and following the range of numbers. I've then got a seven iron and a four iron. The four iron's gonna be interesting because it's not usually my club of choice. Overall here, I've got these in that really good spec. I've got the NS Pro, it's a 95 gram stiff shaft. That is the weight and the stiffness that I usually use. Then in the driver, this is a 9.5 degree head and it's a 55 stiff shaft. So that works really well too. I'm gonna start with the irons first and then work up the back. Okay, let's start with the pitching wedge. I mean, the 10 iron. Over the ball, I actually do really like the shape and the styling of this. There's not that much offset at all, but there is quite a thick top line. Felt pretty solid, definitely flew very high. Those first two shots literally pitched right next to each other. Feels pretty easy to hit. dispersion has been amazingly consistent so far. So the whole story about this range is forgiveness, distance and also being draw biased. Now in terms of distance, I usually hit my pitching wedge 114 yards and this averaged at 122, so a good extra 8 yards there. I was also really impressed with the front to back dispersion, which was only 8 yards and equally the left to right was really impressive at 10 yards, so a pretty tight dispersion circle. In terms of draw bias, you're not typically going to see that much with a wedge, obviously we've got a lot of loft here, so you're not going to get as much shot shape. So I think probably going to see more draw bias further up the bag. But in terms of overall dispersion here, a lot of my shots were very straight down the target line and very small cluster, so pretty good in terms of forgiveness. Pretty strong start for the Hongma GS, now let's move to the 7 iron and see what we find. To see we've jumped from the 10 iron straight into the 7 here, honestly there's not a massive difference in terms of shape and top line, which I'm pretty surprised about. Usually you see clubs getting quite a bit chunky as you move up from the back, especially comprised of 7 iron up to 4 iron but really there's not much difference and it sits really nicely behind the ball. Again, we've not got much offset here. One noticeable thing is though, it does start to feel a bit heavy. I'm not sure if that's just a swing weight thing. Pretty nice high ball flight, but definitely leaked a little bit to the right. Saw a bit more of a draw shape there. Feeling slightly heavier at dress, I do actually really like the feel of these off the club face. That was quite interesting because I didn't really strike at my best, it was definitely a bit matty, and I saw a lot more of a draw shape from that off centre strike, and it still stayed pretty much on line and nearly ended up the same distance as the rest of the shots. Such a nice ball fight. Definitely seen a lot more shots that are drawing than we did with the pitching wedge. So that was pretty impressive. I really loved the dispersion and the control I had with this, and to be honest my front to back dispersion was probably the most impressive thing at just 7 yards. In terms of distance, I looked to hit my 7 iron about 150, and this averaged out at 165, so definitely a pretty big jump up there. My longest shot was up at 170 and my shortest at 163, so I was really happy with the consistency of the distance as well. I did find these to be pretty forgiving, and it was interesting that some of my bad strikes actually drew a little bit more. But these clubs are designed to be draw bias, and to be honest, I did hit a lot of draws with these clubs, but that is my normal stock shot anyway, so I'm not sure how much it was adding to that. 
Again, I was really happy with the height and the flight of these, so I think it's going to be really interesting to move to the 4-iron now and see just how well I can flight that. Typically, I always go for a 4-iron instead of a 4-iron, so this could be interesting. In terms of aesthetics, though, I still really like the way this sits, although it is noticeable the top line is a bit bigger at this point. At this point there's definitely quite a big noticeable difference in feel between a shot you strike really good and one you don't quite catch. Oh, ripped that. No! Don't pick it up! Oh, devastated. I'm definitely flying some of these out a long way for a four but the trajectory is quite low so I'm not sure if you were firing into a par 4 or something like that how well it would hold the green. So overall I was pretty impressed with how far I managed to hit this. I averaged at 186 and my furthest shot went 193 which is definitely a long way for me with an iron. Typically I'm looking to hit my 4 hybrid around the 180 yard mark so it definitely would fit in my bag in terms of gapping. The distance was pretty consistent too, which was probably the most impressive thing about it. But if we look at the dispersion, it wasn't great. It was quite wide and I did hit quite a lot of shots to the right. But really I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that I'm not really comfortable using a 4-iron, I'm not used to it, it does feel quite long for me, and I don't really have a steep enough attack angle to flight it the way I want. And we definitely saw that in the numbers where the flight was a little bit low. In terms of feel and distance, I was really impressed here, but I think someone's either a long iron player or they're not, so you really need to consider that when you're putting this in your bag. Personally for me, with the performance I've seen today, I would happily put the shorter clubs from this bag in my set, probably stop at maybe the five and then move into my hybrids and my fairwoods, but for me, the long iron just isn't quite working. Right, let's go hit the driver now and see how that performs. Again, over the ball, I really like the way this sits. I am partial to a little bit of red, so I really like those pops of colour on the back of the crown as well. Now I would say, if anything, the toe does look like it sits slightly up towards you, but I guess that's going to help in that upright setting to kind of promote that draw shape. One other thing to note is I've got a 45.5 inch shaft in here, which is definitely a little bit longer than what I'm used to using. Good. Well it definitely drew. Okay, if there's one thing I don't need, it's help drawing the ball with a driver. But it's safe to say this is definitely draw bias, so if that's what you need, take a look at this. I mean, I'm definitely going to take out the right side of the course. When you catch this, it goes like an absolute rocket. drives like that, I'd be pretty happy. I think I underestimated how far this driver was going to go. These are all running into the rough at the back of the range. So there's two important things to note here. One, I think this is definitely the most draw bias driver I have ever tested. And two, it was also one of the longest. This averaged out at 236 yards and my longest shot flew 247. That's insane. Now I did have a couple down in the 220s which I didn't quite strike as well and it was noticeable I had a little bit slower club head speed on these but still like if my worst shot flew 220 off the TR on the course I'd be pretty happy. In terms of shot shape as you can see I'm hitting a pretty aggressive draw with this and some of them were definitely very playable but some of them were probably a little bit too much for me. Obviously there are numerous settings that you can tweak here so I could make this a little bit flatter and things like that to make it suit me a bit better. But overall I think if you're someone who struggles with a slice, you can see there's definitely some extra right to left help here. 
In terms of ball flight, the height was a little bit inconsistent and sometimes on the low side. And I would say that was the same with the spin too. But I think if you're someone who hits a left to right shot a lot and struggles with those high spinny right shots, you're probably going to balance the two out and this is going to suit your game. Overall, I have to say I've been really impressed with this. And my favourite part about it was it was just super easy to hit and I found that really fun. And because of the lightweight nature, it actually meant my club head speed went up quite a lot. In fact, I nearly got to that exclusive 100 mile an hour club, but I just missed out at 99.8 on one of my longest shots. If you're in the market for something that's easy to hit and you want more distance and that extra help in terms of draw bias, I would definitely recommend giving this a hit. Okay, quick summary. I loved the short and the mid irons in the GS offering here. I think they were really forgiving, easy to hit and very consistent. I definitely saw some extra yardage there too. In terms of the longer four iron, it's not really my thing, but if you're someone who suits a long iron club, I'm sure you're gonna get on with it as well. But in terms of this range, the drive was definitely the star of the show, especially if you're someone who needs some help hitting that right to left shot. This was definitely very draw biased and it also produced some seriously impressive distance. So make sure to check this out this year. Right, that's all for today. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below or send me a line on Twitter and Instagram. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on notifications too. And if you're after more golf content, head over to the National Club Golfer social media channels for more. Thank <laughs> you.